So team, keep it clean. You see the camo. You see the fatigue. Rebrand time. We ain't talking Ravens no more on this channel. We are going to be talking camping. We're going to be talking hunting. We're going to be talking fishing, outdoorsy stuff. You, you ready for it? I hope you are. But before we get to that, we got to talk about these Baltimore Ravens. And speaking of hunting, the Baltimore Ravens were oh so close to achieving their goal of getting that Lamar Hunt trophy. And in turn, that could have possibly led to them getting the Lombardi trophy. But for so many different reasons, they came up short. But guess what? <laughs> it gets worse. <laughs> it gets worse for us as Ravens fans. It gets worse for them as a franchise. Uh, and, and things could, they could take a turn. Reason I say that is because a few things. Number one, Mike McDonald. Uh, who has given us and continue to give us every single reason in the world to trust him. He gave us every single reason in the world to have faith in him and his craft and his adjustments. He could possibly have another opportunity presented to him. Reason being because, let's read from Adam Schefter, said Ravens defensive coordinator Mike McDonald is scheduled to meet on Monday night with the Washington Commanders owner Josh Harris, general manager Adam Peters, and other Washington leadership per sources. So he's getting ready to go talk to the big dogs over in D.C. Well, Arlington, Virginia, I guess to be exact. But he's getting ready to go talk to the commanders and all their big time decision makers. Again, the owner. He's talking to the owner like he don't get no higher than that. Whether somebody is CEO, CFO, GM, this. No, no, no. The owner. They own the team. And, of course, it said other Washington leadership, too. So Mike McDonald is getting ready to go talk to the big dogs over there. What is he going to go talk to them for? A possible job opportunity. And that is not good news if you are a Ravens fan. And we're going to talk about exactly why. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. No, we are not going to be doing hunting on there. I was just messing around. I was just joking. I know most of y'all got that. But I know it's always somebody that's going to be like, wait, 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 wait. But I, I get it. It's all good. All, all of our minds are still not all, all the way there yet from last night's game. Um, but subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on. We ain't going nowhere. We still got plenty to talk about, even though our offseason started a lot earlier than we anticipated it. Well, not actually not a lot earlier, just a game earlier than we anticipated it starting. Um, so Ravens, they made it far. Not far enough, but they did make it far this year. Um, and then they, of course, just collapsed when it mattered the most. But hey, it is what it is, right? But anyway, subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on. Leave a like on the video because it helps out a lot. And right now, I know us as Ravens fans, we could use all the help that we could possibly get. But somebody that was giving us a lot of help was Mike McDonald. Mike McDonald, um, like I said earlier, he gave us every reason. I remember last night's game uh, when the, the offense, the Chiefs offense, <laughs> not Ravens offense, but Chiefs offense, they scored 14 points. And a lot of people were freaking out. They're like, man, this guy, Mike McDonald, oh, he's probably thinking about head coaching opportunities. He's this, he's that, oh, his defense is so bad, da 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 with Swiss cheese, burnt toast, garbage, trash, all that. And I said it during the game. I said, wait, 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 no, no, no. Mike McDonald, yeah, Chiefs defense, they, they did score, I mean, Chiefs offense, excuse me, they did score 14 points. But when I watched the Baltimore Ravens defense, for the most part, there weren't guys just running wide open. Um, it was just the Chiefs offense was executing just a little bit better than the Ravens defense was. Ravens defense was right there, though. They were close. They were very close, but Chiefs offense, they just did a better job of execution. So it wasn't like Mike McDonald was having this terrible game where he was calling all these bad plays and whatnot. But I said that I expected him to make the necessary adjustments to take care of business. And he did exactly that. Now, I wasn't just saying that as a fan. I was saying that as somebody, just like all of y'all who have watched Mike McDonald and have watched his growth, have watched him take it to that next level as a defensive coordinator and just watch his consistency this year. There have been so many times where the defense, they may start a little bit shaky. They may start a little bit rough. But Mike McDonald will make the necessary adjustments and they'll fix it, especially this latter half of the season. We've seen it in games against like the 49ers, the team in the Super Bowl. We saw it in a game against them where early on it seemed like they were just moving the ball down the field on the Baltimore Ravens. The Baltimore Ravens said, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> Y'all are done now. That's enough. We saw it in the Miami Dolphins game, literally the exact same thing. The exact same thing, because in the Miami Dolphins game, two of them, first drive, moved down the field with ease. Second drive, moved down the field with ease. And that was it. They put a stop to it. So Mike McDonald in this same game, and even last week against the Texans. Texans, they, the whole game, the offense scored three points the whole game. 
Ain't even get past the 25-yard line. So we've seen the adjustments all year from Mike McDonald. So he has given us plenty of reasons to believe in him and believe that he would fix it against the Chiefs. And that's exactly what he did. He fixed it against the Chiefs. But the Baltimore Ravens offense just ended up being so broken that Mike McDonald, he, he couldn't do anything else. And that's why on that last play that officially ended the game where Arthur Millett got beat by MVS for that 32-yard catch in the first down, I couldn't be mad at Mike McDonald. Reason being, you, you didn't give up a single point to the Chiefs all second half. The Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes. And again, I don't care about the whole wide receiver thing. You talk, oh, yeah, this is the worst wide receiver room the, the Chiefs done had in forever. Da, 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 da. They still got Patrick Mahomes. They still got him, and he is like that, obviously. He is like that. He makes amazing decisions. He makes excellent choices. The man is an amazing quarterback. He is whiny a lot of times, which that's one thing I don't like. But besides that, he is an amazing quarterback, and we all know that. So for him to keep Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense out of the end zone and off the scoreboard the entire second half for, for two quarters of a game, that's amazing. And like I said last night in the post-game thoughts video, if you would have told me, oh, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs offense, they're going to score 17 points in the first half. But in the second half, they're not going to score a single point. I would have told you Ravens blowing them out the water like crazy. Oh, that's going to be an ugly game. Oh, yeah, Ravens to the Super Bowl. Let's go. But we, of course, saw how that went or really how it didn't go. But anyway, with Mike McDonald, um, it's also been said that the Seahawks, they could possibly still be waiting for Mike McDonald to, to interview him. I, I remember seeing a report. I don't remember if it was from Schefter or from Ian Rappaport, whoever it might have been from, where they said the Seahawks, they're waiting to the, until the Baltimore Ravens season ends to interview Mike McDonald. But it said that they had to wait. They had to wait till it was over. And I remember thinking in the back of my mind, it ain't going to be over this week. <laughs> They're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, hey, Seahawks, you're going to have to be extra patient. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. Interview away because Ravens season is over. It's done. So with the Baltimore Ravens, they obviously lost in the AFC Championship game, and we got a lot to talk about with that. Ugh, some uncomfortable conversations. Y'all know how it goes. But anyway, um, they lost in the AFC Championship game but they could also be losing a big part of the reason why they even got there in the first place with Mike McDonald. He has shown throughout this entire regular season and in both games in his postseason that he is more than capable of getting the job done as defensive coordinator. He has shown that you can trust him. He's shown his ability. He's shown, the adjust He's shown it all. So why wouldn't somebody want to offer him a, a head coaching job? Because, again, all it takes is one. All it takes is one, and I know, shout out to uh, Trippy Kicker. Trippy had to, he had to talk to Mike McDonald after the game. And Mike McDonald said, he said, hey, he, Mike, t tell these people you ain't going nowhere. He said, I ain't going nowhere. And I saw that. I know a lot of Ravens fans got excited from that, seeing Mike McDonald say that, but <laughs> let the right person cut the check. Like, let the right opportunity come about. Mike McDonald going to be out of here quick, fast, and in a hurry. Because, again, all it takes is the right, the right opportunity. And I wouldn't fault him for that. And I wouldn't be like, oh, man, Mike McDonald, he said he was going to stay. You like, no, go get your bread. Go get your money. I want him to stay. We all want him to stay for sure. Because, again, he showed up when it mattered most. He didn't just show up in a regular season. He showed up in both playoff games when it mattered most. He came through in the clutch. Now, we got some more conversations to have about some other people. But Mike McDonald, he showed out. So if he were to get another opportunity elsewhere, it would be a bittersweet thing. We'd be happy for him being a head coach somewhere, but for us, it'd be like, ah, oh, we lost Mike McDonald. And now speaking about that, this is another reason why I just feel like the Ravens should have done it this year, man. They should have taken advantage of the opportunity this year. They should have capitalized on the situation this year. We talked about so many times throughout this season how it just felt like everything was just lining up perfectly for the Baltimore Ravens. Everything was just falling together and falling in line for the Baltimore Ravens all throughout the season. It was so many different things that happened where it's like, man, oh, this is perfect for the Ravens. Oh, my goodness. This helps out the Ravens so much. And the Ravens were taking advantage of all of it because it just kept lining up and things just kept working out for the Baltimore Ravens over and over and over and over and over. All up until AFC Championship where everything fell apart. Well, <laughs> one side of the football fell apart. But um, speaking of that, 
now a lot of things are not lining up good for the Ravens. And one of the things that we talked about, one of the biggest reasons why we felt like the Baltimore Ravens really needed to take advantage this year was because so much could change. While Mike McDonald, he could possibly be gone. We'll see what happens with that. Ravens got a whole lot of free agents. They got a whole lot of free agents that could possibly also leave too. You got Justin Matabike. Even though I think that they're going to they gonna get it done with him, but we'll see. Because, again, they tried before. They tried last all season, but he was like, no, 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 no. And he showed why like, that it was a smart move for him not to sign because now his price is even higher. And then he got a sack in the AFC championship. Well, he got a half a sack in the AFC championship game on Patrick Mahomes. Well, Ravens could absolutely get no pressure on him like all day. He got a sack in that. Oh, good for him. And good for his money too. But anyway, um, Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen is another one. Um, and he even tweeted yesterday talking about how he, he he gave it his all, put it all out there. And a lot of people felt like, oh, man, that, that's a goodbye tweet for Patrick Queen. And it probably is. It, it probably is. I, I don't think Patrick Queen is going to be back. I would love for Patrick Queen to be back. I would love for him and Roquan Smith to be together for the next four or five years. That would be amazing. But it's business. And we've said this all season long, that with Patrick Queen, would love for him to stay, would love for him to continue to be a Baltimore Raven. But the only way that he would be able to do that is if they gave him a disrespectfully low deal. And hence the word disrespectful. Because he could get much more money elsewhere from somebody else. I do not feel like the Baltimore Ravens are going to pay him the top tier money that he would be able to earn somewhere else. Is he going to get paid like a top five linebacker? Who knows? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so, but we'll see. Top ten, though, I think he will. But I don't see the Ravens paying top five. What is it? I think it's actually top two or three money to Roquan Smith because I think somebody got paid after him and they got a little bit more I believe but anyway Roquan Smith is top three money uh, it might be top one it could be top two but Roquan Smith is top three money they're not going to pay top five money to two linebackers two inside linebackers they're not going to pay top top five money and top ten money to two inside linebackers I just I, I don't see that so with Patrick Queen for him to get the most money that he could possibly get I think he would have to go elsewhere now you know, a lot of Ravens fans were upset last night when they saw Marlon Humphrey and Geno Stone. They, it looked like they were at a little party. It looked like they were having the time of their lives. And a lot of Ravens fans were like, man, what are you guys doing celebrating after a loss like that? What are you guys doing moving on in your lives and finding some positivity in your lives and being happy in your lives after a loss like that? Because that's basically what a lot of people are saying, right? Because it's like fans, and again, fans are fanatics. Fans are crazy. I get that. But still, fans, they want... This situation with the Ravens job, they had a failure at that job yesterday. But fans want them to sit and sulk in that failure 24-7. They don't want them to be happy. They want them to be upset. They want them to be mad. And I get it like, you, know, oh, yeah, you care about the team. And then that's good. That's cool. And you care about these players. And you want to see these players angry like, oh, man, we lost. And you want them to see them sad or whatnot. You don't want to see them out partying. You don't want to see them out having a good time. You don't want to see them out being happy. Now, people deal with stuff in different ways. Just because somebody is out having a good time, just because they're out doing whatever, it doesn't mean that they're not upset about what happened, but they just moved on. They moved on. And it's always been said, and we see it from players all the time, it's always been said that players move on a lot faster than fans do. And that looks like that was the case with Marlon Humphrey and Geno Stone. But the reason why we bring that up is not because that they were partying, not because they were having a good time, which I'm happy for them to have a good time, cool. And y'all make sure y'all have a good time too. Please do. I know with the Baltimore Ravens, we talk about these Baltimore Ravens 24-7. Well, seven days a week, not 24-7. But we talk about them a lot. Um, even though they lost, and it sucks, we expected them to win. We expected them to go to the Super Bowl. Y'all still got lives, too. We all still got lives, too. And that's important to remember. And now that the Baltimore Ravens ain't playing on Sundays anymore for a long time, until August, well, they ain't even going to be playing on Sundays, Sundays in August. It's going to be on, like, Saturdays, Fridays, and maybe Thursday and stuff because it's going to be preseason. But we ain't going to see a meaningful game from the Baltimore Ravens until September. It's the end of January. That is a long time. That's going to be uh, about, what, seven and a half, eight and a half months. It's a long time, baby. But live your life. Live your life. It's okay to be happy. It's okay to get out, go outside, get some fresh air, go do something positive. It's okay. It'll be okay. It's frustrating. These Ravens will frustrate you. They really will, but it's all right. But anyway, back to Marlon Humphrey and Geno Stone. The reason I brought them up in the first place is because Geno Stone said something that caught a lot of Ravens fans' ears. 
Because Marlon Humphrey, he said, I'm going to miss my dog Gino. And Gino said, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. And I saw that and I was like, uh, I don't know about that one, buddy. They're going to miss my dog, man. They're going to miss my dog, man. Ah, baby. Ah, ah. So, hey, maybe in his heart he wants to stay with the Baltimore Ravens, but when it comes to getting paid, I don't think he stays with the Baltimore Ravens unless – the only way I see Geno Stone staying with the Baltimore Ravens, because he's somebody I would love to stay too. The only way I see him staying with the Baltimore Ravens is if they moved on from Marcus Williams. That is the absolute only way I see him remaining with the team. Because where Geno Stone was utilized best at is where Marcus Williams plays at, and that's at free safety. That's where Geno Stone was getting a million interceptions at. And that's why, y'all remember, I continue to say, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But Ravens, they went with the money, they followed the money, and, and they, I get it, you want to have as many good players out there as you possibly can. So they put Marcus Williams back in his normal position, and Geno Stone at strong safety, and that kind of like threw everything off from there. But um, that's the only way I think Geno Stone stays. I, I just think he'll end up going elsewhere. Uh, unless, again, unless the Ravens moved on from Marcus Williams. But we'll see. We'll see. Ravens got a lot of contract decisions to make. I know a lot of Ravens fans have been bringing up, um, they've been talking a lot about Marlon Humphrey. I've been seeing a lot of Ravens fans talk about the possibility of moving on from Marlon Humphrey. A lot of Ravens fans have brought up that um, he ain't been there a lot. He ain't been there a lot. He didn't even play a lot in this AFC Championship game. But they said, well, Marlon Humphrey, his, his availability has not been there this year. And, yeah, this has probably been probably the worst year for him availability-wise because Marlon Humphrey is somebody that used to always be healthy. He's always healthy, always out there, at least for the most part. But I, this was just a weird year for him, extra weird year for him. So it was unfortunate, man. Um, and it started from before the season even started because he got that foot injury. And that made him miss a month, and then he was back and forth, back and forth, in and out of the lineup. And it's just a rough year. Ronnie Stanley, that's another person who a lot of people who brought up, have brought up conversation about. Uh, the Ravens should move on from Ronnie Stanley. And that's been one that's been talked about for a while. Uh, but then, I, especially after yesterday, especially leading up to the game yesterday, there had been a lot of conversation about him. But after the game yesterday, there's certainly been a lot of conversation about him. Mark Andrews. I saw a lot of Ravens fans continue the conversation about the possibility and just the thought of moving on from Mark Andrews. Andrews so whew, we got a lot to talk about this offseason um we got a lot of questions to be answered uh we got a lot of conversations to be had but I know I appreciate that y'all gonna be a part of all of that team keep it clean I love y'all appreciate y'all so much again make sure you subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single video not a single conversation because we're gonna have all of those conversations very very shortly because <laughs> now we got the time for it unfortunately but I appreciate y'all. Leave a like on the video. Uh, keep being you. Keep being positive. And I appreciate y'all for everything that y'all do. And just like the Ravens when it comes to being in the playoffs, we out.